For those of you who haven't seen it, The Matrix is about a world where Jack Traven could alter the speed of time and used this power to completely destroy the planet's network connection. Nah, cut. The Matrix was a superhero action film starring Johnny Utah whose special power is to make life even slower. Cut. The Matrix was a cyberpunk movie about a flying John Wick defeating an endless horde of cyber terrorists. I don't like these. You know, The Matrix to me was a good movie and I saw it at a young age so it really got me thinking about reality as a whole. What was real? What was fake? I didn't know but what I did know is that I wanted to get out of the life that I had and start a new one where I was a flying kung fu master just like that dude from Bill and Ted. And even now I'm still willing to entertain the idea of our existence being a simulation. And any movie that creates deep thought of that level deserves to be talked about. But this is a gaming channel so instead I'm gonna talk about The Matrix online. Now movie license games have been notorious for being less than amazing, but to my knowledge this was the first movie licensed MMO. It was officially released on March 22nd, 2005 after every movie in the Matrix trilogy already came out. And I say this because the Wachowski sisters allowed the game to be a continuation of the movie storyline. So this game doesn't just have a few references here and there, it's literally the next chapter in the franchise. It was developed by Monolith Games as stated in my previous episode about Fear Online. Go watch that to see what happens to a game when the developer doesn't care about the source material. The Matrix Online takes place in Mega City with four districts, Rich Land, which was the slums, and I think that's hilarious, Westview, which was the Barrens, the International District, mainly consisting of Asian cultures, and then there was Downtown, which was the high-class society section of the city and where the machines like to hang out. When starting the game, you get the choice between taking the red pill or the blue pill. And by the way, if you did in fact take the blue pill, the game tells you to enjoy the rest of your life and then shuts down. If you take the red pill, you're taken to a tutorial in the white blank purgatory with the two chairs and the TV that Morpheus was sitting in. But unfortunately, Lawrence Fishburne is not there. Instead, you're guided by Link. After the tutorial, you were able to learn Matrix stuff like jumping really far and slowing down time to dodge bullets. And there were two forms of combat. The first were you you would use various guns to shoot at each other, but this was an MMO, so the Matrix Online had a traditional MMO combat system, where you would choose an ability and it would hit or miss or be blocked based on an RNG die roll. And after the full introduction of the game, you could choose one of the three organizations. There was Zion, whose main objective is to protect the human freedom. There was the Machines, whose objective was to maintain the Matrix and protect the blue pills in it. And there were the Exiles, based on that French guy from Matrix Reloaded. Their objectives were to protect them themselves not really caring about the war between Zion and the machines. What's unfortunate is that although you could side with the machines and roleplay as an agent, there wasn't really an agent class per se, but it's not like there were wizards or clerics or anything like that. Instead, your classes were coder, which was the utility class that could make various items in the game. There was hacker, which was the support class that could provide substantial healing. And there was operative, which was the soldier class, and they were adept at the two combat systems in the game. Each skill tree allowed for two different ways to play each class, so you weren't locked into just a single purpose in the game. The continuation of the story for The Matrix Online happened through patches. There were nine total main storyline missions using three for each organization. And if you are interested in the storyline, then I highly suggest looking at the wiki page because there's basically a book's worth of text explaining the events that take place. And it's actually a pretty good read. There were also events for every organization, the first being to find the one because apparently no one knows where Neo's body went. And this is completed by each organization trying to find the most fragments of Neo. Each server was able to have their own winner just because Zion won in one server doesn't mean that the machines couldn't win in another. And there were actually quite a few servers in the beginning of the Matrix Online's life, but they later merged to only three servers to help the population. There was Vector, which was the hostile server. There was Recursion, which was the non-hostile server. And there was Syntax, which some community members used to roleplay. The reason population was a problem was because of a monolith-sized mistake to fix an exploit. There was a bug in the game that allowed you to redo the same mission over and over while still gaining full experience, and the developers felt the need to patch that out right away. But instead of making it so you can't redo the same mission, they just gave everyone less experience and currency. Patch 7.341 reduced all quest rewards by a whopping 80%, resulting in enormous backlash and a huge hit to the subscriber base. Yeah, 
this wasn't free to play by any means either, costing a whopping 15 bucks a month for a subscription. And it could be said that this patch even directly led to Warner Brothers backing out of the Matrix Online and selling the rights to Sony Online Entertainment. And I'm not saying I support the decision by any means, but Warner Brothers did kind of just use the game to advertise upcoming movies. Hey look, it's that guy from the lake house, he's in that one too. You also needed some decent hardware to run this game because it was by no means optimized. For 2005, the graphics were better than most MMOs, but see, while the ideas of The Matrix Online were well polished, the animations were less than smooth, resulting in some combat situations feeling clunky. And yeah, this definitely looked like an MMO first and a Matrix game second. Even with all the references and homages, the common MMO tropes are still all there. Although The Matrix Online was obviously fantastic on paper, it didn't break the mold on MMOs by any means. It was more of a cyberpunk skin to previous MMOs with lots of Matrix mechanics and doodads thrown in. Unfortunately, The Matrix Online was shut down August 1st of 2009 with Sony Online Entertainment saying that the cost of maintenance was ridiculous. I couldn't find anything pertaining to refunds at the end of the game's life, but you were able to advance to max level in the game without the grind along with the level boost there was also a book of memories. It was added to the Matrix Online website and it goes over the, all of the main story and special events in the game along with notable users and fan sites. In the end though, there was less than 500 total subscribers playing, but trust me, the people that stuck with this game till the very end had no shame in expressing their love for The Matrix Online. And one community member was actually able to get enough data from the game to create a successful emulation. So you can, in fact, still play The Matrix Online if you're looking for a nostalgia high or you never got the chance to play it when the official game was out. But if you were a fan of the Matrix movies and have strong feelings towards the idea of simulated life and wanted an immersive gaming experience to continue the story, allowing you to take one step closer into the Matrix universe as a super jumping combat specialist with the ability to slow time and wasn't deterred by common problems in MMOs like excessive grinding, bugs, or glitches, then The Matrix Online is a game you might remember. And if you have played The Matrix Online, please share your experiences in the comments. If you're a fan of the Games You Might Remember series, hit that subscribe button. If you want to suggest games for me to cover in the future, or if you just want to have a nice little chit chat with me, then feel free to join the Daily Quest Discord. There will be a link in the description. And we also have a Facebook if you're into that sort of thing. Peace out.